Welcome to the Daily Race. Today we are wrapping up our time in Jeremiah. We're in Jeremiah chapter 52, and uh, it's been full of a lot of prophecy, a lot of warnings, all about the time period of the Israelites, uh, Judah, going into captivity in Babylon. Uh, and today, uh, the very last chapter of Jeremiah recounts the fall of, of Jerusalem. Uh, what it looked like. It's, it's narrative here today as it kind of summarizes it all up, um, recounts what, what took place there. So uh, as we've been going through the prophecy, we've been going back and forth in time a little bit. We've been talking about things that will happen, uh, things that are happening. Uh, then, you know, fast forwarding, you know, things are going to happen way in the future with uh, kingdoms falling and then coming back. So it's, it's been a back and forth a little bit because it's prophecy. Uh, it's organized into to sections about different groups that are being prophesied against. Um, so because of that grouping, doesn't necessarily mean that it's it's linear time-wise. So if you feel a little jumbled around in, in Jeremiah, hey, don't worry about that. Uh, it's uh, it's one of those things where a good Bible study with notes, um, sometimes you just, uh, study Bible with notes, you just need to kind of back up a little bit like, okay, wait a second, where is this taking place? Uh, when is this happening? Uh, but the, the fall of Jerusalem here, Although this isn't the, the end of the story because Jeremiah writes to the Israelites in captivity, so this has happened after this fall, it's recounting this, this momentous uh, point in history for the Israelites when they're completely taken into captivity. It says this, uh, Zedekiah, when, uh, Zedekiah, so King Zedekiah, was 21 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem for 11 years. His mother was Hamulta, and daughter of Jeremiah from Libna. So this is not Jeremiah the prophet, another Jeremiah. But Zedekiah did what was evil in the Lord's sight, just as Jehoiakim had done. So Jehoiakim was his father. He was the king. He followed in his footsteps. He did evil what was in the sight of the Lord. What's important to know here is there was actually an, another king in between these two, his, his brother. Uh, Jehoiah, I'm going to get this right, uh, Jehoiachin, Jehoiachin. So there's Jehoiakim, Jehoiachin. It would be really nice if it was like Frank and George in words that we were used to, very distinguished. But it's not. This is this is the, the names of the people in the Bible during this time in history. So uh, we get to, I get to struggle with them. You get to watch me struggle on the daily race with all these all these names. But but anyways, that's that's not the point of it. I'm not trying to make you feel sorry for me. Uh, so uh, Jehoiachin. Only reigned for three months. Three months. Uh, he was the immediate successor uh, to Jehoiakim, and Nebuchadnezzar took him into captivity, took him back to Babylon, and then put uh, Zedekiah into place. And he's the one that's reigning here for a longer period of time. The only reason why I bring that up is because the very last part of this chapter brings him up. It's important. So, eleventh uh, year of his reign, uh, he reigned for eleven years. In the ninth year of his reign, Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, siege, put a siege on uh, Jerusalem, which means they surround it, nothing can come in or out, and it's essentially a tactic where they're just going to starve the people out. Um, Jerusalem has an amazing wall, uh, defensives, all these types of things, and instead of wasting a lot of manpower on trying to break the wall and, and losing people, they just decide to wait them out. And for two years, supplies dwindle, people begin to starve. And eventually, Zedekiah makes a break for it. They break down part of the wall. He sneaks out at night, but he gets caught. He gets caught. Um, he's brought by the, the captain of the guard to Nebuchadnezzar, along with all of his officials, his sons. He watches them be slaughtered, be killed. They gouge his eyes out, and they put him in prison. Not a good end to King Zedekiah. That's why, you know when it starts off the paragraph with he did evil in the sight of the Lord, good things aren't going to come for him. Uh, within the next uh, month or so, uh, they go into Jerusalem and they completely level. Uh, they break down all the walls. Uh, all the walls have completely been brought down. Uh, we see the, the flip side of this uh, years later when um, they go back to, Nehemiah goes back to what? Rebuild the walls because they've been taken down at this point. The city's vulnerable. They're able to go in and, and completely uh, annihilate. They take down the temple. They destroy it completely. It says on August 17th of that year, which is the 19th year of King Nebuchadnezzar's reigns, uh, Nebuzardan, Nebuzardan, 
the captain of the guard, an official of the Babylonian king, arrived in Jerusalem. He burned down the temple of the Lord, the royal palace, and all the houses of Jerusalem. He destroyed all the important buildings of the city. He supervised the entire Babylonian army as they tore down the walls of Jerusalem on every side. And then talks about how they took um, everything of value out of the temple. All the bronze, uh, the big bronze pillars, the big bronze basin that they called the sea that they used for, for ceremonial cleaning. Everything was taken at this point. And everything was completely annihilated. The temple was destroyed. Uh, it wasn't just, you know, ransacked. It wasn't just, you know, gutted out. It is gone. It is gone. It is decimated there for them. And more people are taken back into captivity. But here's, here's where it ends, though. Because that's, that's pretty depressing, right? Like, he promises, God makes his promise 70 years later, they can come back. That account is in here. But here's the, the end of it, the hope. It says this, In the 37th year of the exile of King Jehoiakim, so here's Jehoiakim, he'd only reigned for three years, or three months in Jerusalem. Nebuchadnezzar took him back, along with many kings that he had deposed, and kept them imprisoned in Babylon as his, like, uh, war prizes. And it says this, uh, evil, evil Merodach ascended to the Babylonian throne, so Nebuchadnezzar's successor. He was kind to Jehoiakim and released him from prison on March 31st of that year. He spoke kindly to Jehoiakim and gave him a higher place than all the other exiled kings in Babylon. He supplied Jehoiakim with new clothes to replace his prison guard and allowed him to dine in the king's presence for the rest of his life. So the Babylonian king gave him regular food allowances as long as he lived. This continued into the day of his death. You might be saying, well, how is that hope? What's the promise? The promise is that through the line of David, the Messiah will come. The line of David has to survive. That lineage has to continue on. So here we have it continuing with Jehoiakim. Even though he was only king for, for three months, God preserved him, preserved him, and not in a very safe, not a very fun place, in prison in Babylon, preserved him, and eventually brought him out of that into a place of, of more comfort so that he would survive, so that he would have kids, and those kids would have kids, and those kids would have kids, and those kids would have kids, and eventually there'd be a man born Joseph, and there'd be a woman Mary, and they would have a child conceived by the Holy Spirit, and that would be Jesus. God always fulfills his promises. He always makes a way. And that's what we see taking place here at the very end of Jeremiah. It's a very difficult book in the sense that there's, there's not a lot of good news in this. But God's promise prevails. Even though very difficult situations had to go through, even there was judgment, even though there was punishment, God never lets up on his promises. And that's the big meta theme of Jeremiah here. And we see this taking place in the promise of the fact that King Jehoiakim survives, survives to carry on the promise of God. All right. Well, that, that concludes our, our study on Jeremiah here. Uh, we went, went through it pretty, pretty quickly here, you know, just a couple weeks to go through 52 chapters, uh, but cover the, the main themes, the, the big ideas, Hope that you are encouraged. Hope that you kind of see the context of it, how this fits within Israel's history. It fits within the context of the Old Testament, how prophecy uh, overlaps the historical narratives, and that we kind of see how it all fits together here just a little bit better here on the daily race. And through this, more importantly, we learn about the character of God and how that applies to our lives each and every day. All right, let's pray, and uh, then we'll wrap this up. Heavenly Father, we uh, start, start this day with you like we have so many others, yet we do it with, with hope. Hope because your promises never fail. Hope because of what you did in and through the family of Israel. Hope because Jesus came and he died and he went to the cross for our sins and he rose from the dead. Hope that he will return again. We thank you. We stand in confidence today because of your track record. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. 
I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.